Hey everybody, happy Thursday. Welcome back into the card closet. This is Eric. So glad you are choosing to spend your time in the card closet with me. Great to have you. In the background for this video, we've got a couple bills from Ukraine. A $1 bill and a $2 bill from Ukraine. The gentlemen on the bill are ancestors of mine. We've got Yaroslav the Wise and Vladimir the Great. And they were the grand princes, i.e. kings, of the Kievan Rus around the year 1000. And that's when Ukraine and Russia were one country. And these guys were the rulers over it. So I thought given what's going on over there in Ukraine right now with Russia attacking them, invading them, I'd put these in the background. So I'm going to talk tonight about investing. Been a lot of channels out there that have popped up in the last couple of years since the pandemic, especially about investing in cards and flipping and buying and reselling for more and prices, you know, dro drove the prices up quite a bit. You know, my philosophy is that investing is something you do for the long term. There's short-term investing, which is, you know, four or five years or less. And there's long-term investing, five years or more. So, like, for retirement, investing for retirement would be a long-term investment. If your kids are teenagers and college is a few years away and you're saving up for that, doing some mutual funds or whatever, that would be short-term investing. So I do not think of investing as what I do with baseball cards at all. I'm truly a collector. And if you think about what the word collect means, it means to gather things towards yourself. And so anybody that's out there buying and reselling, to me is not a collector by definition. They are a flipper. But there is one way that my collecting is like investing, and that's with my, my strategy. So in investing, my strategy has been to be very intentional about things, very uh, plan-oriented, follow the plan to the T, consistency. And that's how my card collecting is for the most part, too. But then you got about that 5% of investing where you invested in something kind of risky. And so that's kind of your, your fun money, so to speak, just in case there's something big going on on the side and you want to throw some money into that and you don't have too much invested into it. So if it, you lose it, it's not the end of the world, but if you, but if it goes big, then you were in on it. So that's kind of how my investing is. And that's how I think of my collecting too. 95% is very methodical, planned, intentional, building sets building team sets of the Red Sox, Steelers, Lakers, building up my PCs of Carl Yastrzemski and Aaron Seeley. Just very planned, very methodical. But then I've got that 5% that of collecting for me, which is just fun. It's like, my, it's like my fun money, so to speak. And that is just anything that catches my eye, honestly. I've got a little bit of my corner of my collection that's just what I consider fun stuff. Not in sets, nothing like that. And that brings us to some recent pickups. These are the kind of things that I throw into that 5%. Sh usually it's shiny stuff. Usually it's around players I really like. And these are some things that I've picked up recently that would fall into that. Topps Chrome Refractor of David Ortiz. Started getting these Ortiz cards when he got in, uh, got inducted, he hasn't been inducted, but when he got voted in, here's a Topps Chrome Prism Refractor. Just beautiful. Again, I'm not going for the whole team set. I'm not going for the whole set of the entire uh, MLB there. Just key players. Pretty cards of key players. Here's another Topps Chrome Refractor of Big Poppy. And honestly, this is where the, my where I have the most fun in my collecting. 
Um, it's fun to collect sets, um, but, you know, it's kind of methodical, and it's kind of almost out of duty year after year because you don't want to end the streak. Here's a Nomar. This is a Donruss Collections card. Short printed, just gorgeous. It's another Big Poppy Topps Chrome Refractor. I tend to get these fun cards of players later. I tend to, you know, after they've retired or after they've left the Red Sox. It's David Ortiz, Bowman Chrome Refractor. And Bowman Chrome Refractor again of David Ortiz. So, you know, I'm just picking these up now. Didn't pick them up at the time. Well, it seems like whenever I try to do this with a current player, then they leave the team and then I'm not so much interested. So I've got a number of uh, Mookie Betts shiny cards like these. And, you know, honestly, now that he's moved on, he wasn't with the Red Sox that many years. By the time he retires, it won't even have been the majority of his career. So honestly, those cards are just going to go up for sale or up for trade, honestly. like to pick the players that, like I said, that are established and have that history with my team. Here's Ben Roethlisberger, Donruss Optic Hollow. So Roethlisberger is one of the football players that I'm doing this shiny stuff with. Uh, here's Topps Chrome Refractor of Big Ben. And I've showed this set before. This, I believe, is one of the prettiest sets, if not the prettiest set ever. This is the Panini Crusade Purple from 2012-13. Number to 49. Here's Wilt Chamberlain. Trying to get all the historical Laker greats in this set. So there you go. That's how investing and collecting are linked for me more on the strategy than, than uh, overlapping as if I collect instead of investing. When I get cards, I have no intention of getting rid of them. And if I do, I didn't mean to at the time. Kind of like that Mookie Betts, like I said. It's just something that you end up with some cards that you, eh, you don't care if you have them anymore. So hope you have a great weekend. we got Friday coming tomorrow. Hope you all have a great one. We'll talk to you again soon. Please, if you're not a subscriber, click that subscribe button. Leave me a comment on how the hobby is or isn't like investing for you. We'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.